Stanley held it in his hand and stared at it a moment. He was afraid of the broken glass. He was also afraid of the sploosh. It looked like mud. Whatever it was, he re realised it must have been in the boat when the boat sank. That meant it was probably over a hundred years old. Who knew what kind of bacteria might be living in it? It's good, said Zero, encouraging, encouraging him. He wondered if Zero had heard of bacteria. He raised the jar to his mouth and carefully took a sip. It was a warm, bubbly, mushy nectar, sweet and tangy. It felt like heaven as it flowed over his dry mouth and down his parched throat. He thought it might have been some kind of fruit at some time, perhaps peaches. Zero smiled at him. I told you it was good. Stanley didn't want to drink too much, but it was go too good to resist. They passed the jar back and forth until it was empty. How many are left? he asked. None, said Zero. Stanley's mouth dropped. Now I have to take you back, he said. I'm not digging any more holes, said Stanley. They won't make you dig, Stanley promised. They'll probably send you to a hospital like Barf Bag. Barf Bag stepped on a rattlesnake, said Zero. Stanley remembered how he'd almost done the same. I guess he didn't hear the rattle. He did it on purpose, said Zero. You think? He took off his shoe and sock first. Stanley shriveled as he tried to imagine it. What's my lu o o asked Zero. What? Zero concentrated harder. Maya lu o o I have no idea. I'll show you, said Zero. He crawled back from under the boat. Stanley followed. Back outside, he had to shield his eyes from the brightness. Zero walked around to the back of the boat and pointed to the upside down letters. Mer you Lu O U Stanley smiled. Mary Lou It's the name of the boat. Mary Lou, Zero repeated, studying the letters. I thought the Y made the Y sound. It does, said Stanley, but when it's at the end of the of a word, Sometimes Y is a vowel and sometimes it's a consonant. Zero slowly groaned. He grabbed his stomach and bent over. Are you all right? Zero dropped to the ground. He lay on his side with his knees pulled up to his chest. He continued to groan. Stanley watched helplessly. He wondered if it was a sploosh. He looked back towards Camp Green Lake. At least he thought it was in the the direction of Camp Green Lake. He wasn't entirely sure. Zero stopped moaning and his body slowly unbent. I'm taking you back, said Stanley. Zero managed to sit up. He took several deep breaths. Look, I've got a plan so you won't get in, in trouble, Stanley assured him. Remember when I found the gold tube? Remember, I gave it to X-Ray and the warden went crazy making a stig where she thought X-Ray found it. I think if I tell the warden where I really found it, I think she'll let us off. I'm not going back, said Zero. You've got nowhere else to go, said Stanley. Zero said nothing. You'll die out here, said Stanley. Then I'll die out here. Stanley didn't know what to do. He had to come rescue Zero, and instead... He, he, he had come to rescue Zero, and instead drank the last of his sploosh. He looked off into the distance. I want to... I want you to look at something. I'm not... I just want you to look at that mountain up there. See the one that has something sticking up out of it? Yeah, I think. What does it look like to you? Does it look like anything? Zero said nothing. But he studied the mountain. His right hand slowly formed into a f But as he studied the mountain, his right hand slowly formed into a fist. He raised his thumb. His eyes went from the mountain to his hand, then back to the mountains.